like a fine wine. It only gets better with age. What does that even mean? Is aged wine any good? What happens when wine ages? We're going to talk all about that right now. I've found that people that are new to wine tend to not like or appreciate the nuances that come with aged wine. And palates change. I used to love aged wine. The more and more I get into wine, the more I do this professionally, the more I prefer wines with just a moderate amount of bottle age or even young. You have to know that such a small percentage of wines made around the world are actually meant to be aged. Most wines are made to be consumed young and fresh. I've seen it time and time again with friends and family that got a bottle of wine. They said, oh, I'm going to age it. Well, first of all, they don't even know if they like aged wine. And then second of all, they're usually given bottles that are not designed to be aged. Aging wine isn't as popular as it used to be because you need the right cellar conditions. You need constant temperature, constant humidity, and no light. Not everybody these days has that space or that luxury to have a big cellar. In the past, especially in Europe, I think ageability in a way was an excuse. Back then, the climate was a little bit cooler. Therefore, the grapes weren't fully ripe. A lot of times, bottle age was required to soften the tannins in red wine. You know, that stuff that makes your mouth go also, the acidity was a little bit higher. You know that stuff that makes the wine feel sour? Nowadays, across wine growing regions in the world, temperatures have risen, technology, viticulture has improved, so wines are now made to be softer and more approachable young. And if you ask me, that's a good thing. As a general rule, wines that you pay 25, 30 US dollars and up generally are wines that might be suitable for aging. Of course, there are some exceptions, but a higher price bottle doesn't always mean that the wine's gonna age well. Bottle age is a process where a tiny bit of oxygen interacts with wine. It changes wines from fresher fruit flavors to more dried fruit flavors. You get more tobacco, more earthy type characteristics. The wines feel a little bit rounder. Red wines with high tannins, it starts to soften. And wines with high acidity start to feel a little creamier. Wine is full of complexities and variables. I'm glad that there is one rule that's true when it comes to aged wine. Red wines are going to lose color, where aged white wines are going to gain color with time. Yes, great white wines can age. All wines go through this curve of development. Development over time. With time, wines start to develop until they reach their peak. And then with some more time, they start their slow decline. This rate will always be variable. Sometimes wines develop really quickly, reach their peak, stay there for a short amount of time, and then fall down quickly. Others start a slow, slow, slow ascent, might reach their peak where they stay there for a long, long time before they start their slow descent. And then others, must, others might go bloop, 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 really quickly. Wine connoisseurs, they want to catch lightning in a bottle. They want to catch wine at the top of that curve. And it is magic when you catch that wine at the right moment in time. However, that's very rare. A lot of times when it comes to really old bottles, I'm disappointed more often than I get excited. When it comes to wines that take aging well, maybe the King or in France, when we're talking about the wines from Bordeaux, from Burgundy, some from the Northern Rhone, you go over to Spain, the wines of Rioja, you go down to Italy, you get some great wines like Barolo, Barbaresco, Chianti Classico, Brunello di Montalcino. You can go into California, Napa Cabernets can age exceptionally well. I've had some beautiful Cabernet Sauvignon from Napa from the 60s and 70s. And when it comes to white, German Riesling is probably the king. But don't sleep on fortified wines, sweet wines too. The high alcohol, the high sugar content of wines like Port, like Tokai, like Sauterne, Constantia, these great sweet wines probably have the longest life of any wine. Of course, with better technology, there are wines designed to be aged all over the world. Now you can find them all over Europe and South Africa, Australia, and even New Zealand. And speaking of, I have three examples of one of Italy's greatest wines that's meant to have bottle age, Brunello di Montalcino. I have three vintages of Brunello di Montalcino from Pinino. They didn't sponsor this video, but they were kind enough to send me some older vintages of the Rosso di Montalcino and the Brunello di Montalcino. 100% Sangiovese. I know, I know, lately this show is like Sangiovese Orama. And you know what? I'm completely fine with it. Maybe I'll change the channel name to Sangiovese Wine Travel. So let's compare these three wines. I'm just going to talk about what I see in bottle age. 
with 2016, 15, and 2013. The same wine, same vineyards made in the same way, just different ages. And yes, 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 I know people might be complaining or doubting the comments and you need to taste wines that are aged for 30, 40 years. I don't have that available to me at the moment. Sorry. Okay, 2016, Brunello di Montalcino from Penino. You can already see that it's starting to lose color, but... Sangiovese is a grape that doesn't have a lot of color. You start to get some of that browning on the edges there. Oh, that's good. <laughs> 16 is a great vintage in Brunello di Montalcino. That wine is already awesome. These are three good examples, even though the vintages are really tight together. 2016 is bursting with sour cherry, more vibrant, vivacious red fruit flavors. The tans are a little bit more hard. Whereas in 2015, I can start to see that mix, almost if you had a bowl of fresh sour cherries and maybe some dried cherry flavors. Tannins are still a little bit aggressive. In 2013, the tannins are a little bit rounder and it's full on dried red fruit flavors, more leathery, more savory. Remember that curve, these wines are slow slowly, slowly ascending, nowhere near their peak window. I'm happy drinking them now because I don't mind young wines. They also sent me three vintages of their Rosso de Montalcino, which is the lower level of Brunello de Montalcino. Some of the best value, some of the wines I love to drink. Check out Rosso de Montalcino. You can get a lot of these wines sometimes for 25, 20 bucks. They sent me 2019, 18, and 17. And in this set, there was a drastic difference 2017 was already really developed. Remember that little curve? It was up at the top of the curve. So is aged wine any good? There's a time and a place for aged wine. There are times when I really enjoy sitting down, thinking about aged wine, trying to find all the complexities like in this 2013 really sitting, thinking, ruminating about it. And there are other times where I prefer this 2016. It's a little more vibrant. Yeah, it has some harder tannins, but the fruit is so vivacious. And it also comes down to personal palate and preference. I've met a lot of people that just don't like aged wines at all. I've, lot of, I've met some people that don't like young wines at all. At the end of the day, you have to taste a lot and decide for yourself. Please, please, please be confident in yourself. Don't pretend to like an aged wine just because you think it's the right thing to do or everybody else around the table likes it. So I'd like to know, do you like aged wine? Do you like young wines? Is, what's your favorite wine that's ageable? Drop it in the comments below. And if you're thinking about what to watch next, why don't you check out this video right here. Thanks for watching. Cheers.